Tonight is something um, particularly special. Um, we are honored to have the artist Martine Gutierrez here to, um, as a preview of sorts or context for Focus Martine Gutierrez, which opens to the public this weekend. Uh, Martine was born in Berkeley, California, received a BFA from RISD in Rhode Island, and is now based in Brooklyn and represented by Ryan Lee Gallery in New York. Um, she has an international career um, as an artist, musician, and producer. Performance um, seems to be at the core of Martine's practice. For example, her 146-page publication, Indigenous Woman, uh, celebrating Mayan Indian heritage. This is, quote, celebrating Mayan um, Indian heritage, navigation of contemporary um, this word is hard for me, indigeneity? Thank you, that's it. Um, and the ever-evolving self-image, end of quote. <laughs> Complete with ads, fashion spreads, letter from the editor, and more, this magazine or this publication performs as a glossy fashion magazine with uh, Martine performing every function necessary to manifest this mammoth and spectacular endeavor, including roles in front of and behind the camera. Ambition, rigor, and above average production skills are clearly driving forces for this work. Such ambition, rigor, and skill have brought Martine a great deal of attention. Most recently, work from her Demons and Body and Thrall series were selected for this year's, um, the 58th Venice Biennale, curated by Ralph Rogoff, who presented a very selective group of artists for um, what he titled, <laughs> May You Live in Interesting Times. And I must say, Martine's work beautifully held its own on the world stage that is the Biennale. In addition, um, for just this year, I'm just doing the most recent, um, group um, exhibitions include Kiss My Genders at the Hayward Gallery in uh, London, uh, Trans American Gender Identity Appearance Today at the McNay Art Museum in San Antonio, CT Mask at the Kunst Museum, Bonn, Germany, and Crack Up, Crack Down at the Lublina um, Biennial of Graphic Arts curated by Slavs and Tartars um, in um, Slovenia. Her solo exhibitions in 2009 are Life Like Photographs at Mount, uh, Mount Holyoke College Art Museum South Hanley, Massachusetts, and of course, the moderns focus Martine Gutierrez, curated by Allison Hurst, which is what brings us here tonight. So if you would, please join me in welcoming Martine Gutierrez. Si yo conociera tu cara, yo te buscaría. Nunca apartaría mis ojos de ti si yo te conociera. Si yo conociera tu voz, yo iría gritando, anunciando hasta que oyera tus gritos. Si yo te conociera.
really bad thing. <laughs> Except um, I made this. Um, and I don't know. I'm, I'm every person and every photographer and every graphic designer and every makeup artist and every stylist and every brand and every interview and all the writers and the publisher <laughs> and the CEO of Indigenous Women, which is real. I feel like, okay. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. It's just the reality. Um, but I do have some things I want to show you. And I was thinking for all of you that hadn't seen this, this would be a great place to start um, before working backwards into the, the conception of, I mean, I guess that the idea um, and the, the need to work on something for what ended up taking three years, um, starting with this. Uh, which is a collection of images that um, I started tearing out of magazines in like 2010, maybe earlier, um, because I couldn't store all the magazines that I was hoarding, and I don't want to be a hoarder, so it felt better to just kind of disregard all the images that weren't very good. Um, so you'll see, you'll see some like CD art, <laughs> CDs, um, <laughs> you'll see, I mean the whole thing is like so nostalgic, right, like magazines are dying, the music industry is like weird, not dying, but just different, um, our capacity to like look at things is shorter, our ability to like question ourselves seems to be greater, and yet that only means that we have more words to kind of, I don't know, trap us. Um, and I think, I don't know, I, I guess my hope was to make something that I could see myself in and it ended up becoming something much larger than that. I, and I think these images kind of bear witness to this need to um, to identify with an icon or with someone of my experience and that search for, even in just the way that we look um, and the kind of struggle to see that growing up, especially as a child that like wanted a my size Barbie and wasn't allowed to have one. And the one that I coveted was like blonde with blue eyes and you know, I was twice as tall as her. Like there was, that, that's not me. Um, which I guess goes into like my love of mannequins. Um, I feel like th these are also because they're so early. There's some very interesting um, borrowing of cultures. Um, it's a little inappropriate, and yet it was like printed in the pages of Vogue not that long ago, and it's, but it's still interesting, and to me it's like, in its own way successful, at least at, at, at being beautiful, um, maybe it's not intelligent, <laughs> and maybe it's offensive, uh, but how else are we going to talk about, I don't know, how else are we going to talk about what's inappropriate if we don't see it, right? Like, and how can we question, um, I don't know, like how can we question any existence without bringing it forward? Um, ugh. I mean, these Kohler ads 
are iconic and so strange. Like this one. Um, also, I feel like fashion has this interesting way of kind of borrowing from everyone else to validate itself. So it needs artists. It needs directors. It needs politics. To, 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 it needs youth um, to have any kind of legs. And that wasn't something that was important to me um, to, to hopefully convey. But this is, this is so cinematic. Like this, the shoot, it feels like some beautiful movie. Ah, oh, Gaga's first cover. <laughs> <laughs> These cover girl campaigns are crazy. Mm. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> this is very Blade Runner, the first one. Barbie, more Barbie. Hmm. The picturesque. The like the ideal feminine, at least from my my mother's generation, I think that's so interesting too. How that's changed, and yet like ever present. Oh my God, who remembers vitamin C? <laughs> and sang graduation at their graduation. Um, this album. The epitome. Okay, I want to tell a story. I saw her at a party recently in New York, and um, I couldn't talk to her. She was absolutely tiny. She was like th this big. <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, that is Bajork. And I have, I have no way, like there's, I need someone who knows both of us to like introduce us to my future mentor. Um, but there was no one there, so it just didn't happen. And I figured there'll be a dinner at another time. And Bjork, if you're watching this, <laughs> you looked great. <laughs> Ugh, this chair, I don't know, like, as just like an art object, is just so beautiful to me. I wonder who made it. Anywho. Na, na, na. Ah, this. Borrowing. Period. It's just like, I wonder what he was paid. It's crazy, it's like all of them. Mm, Gorge. I was obsessed with her for a long time. Laura Stone. Ugh, oh, these. Anywho. I thumbed through this book earlier when we did our tech and I was all worried that like, cause I had forgotten about most of these images. And I was worried I was, I was like using up my like first experience of kind of like unpacking it all over again. But I actually didn't have time to go through all of this. The, I mean, these are insane. Just as like runway catalogs, I feel like these were huge. Just in terms of like what makeup and hair can do to turn all these ordinary skinny girls into like runway goddesses. Ugh, this house. It's crazy, like where is this house? 
Where? Love it. <laughs> <laughs> We're going. Oh my God. Where's this house? <laughs> Paris. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, and then these. So these are from National Geographic 2013. Um, and they're amazing. It's basically like, it's basically a study to see, like, census bureau-wise, how people are identifying. Um, but my interest was in kind of interpreting where these people are from or where we're kind of like projecting these people are from based on what they look like, um, which I feel like is something that's happened to me in my entire life. I mean, to all of us. Um, I just happen to sit in like a very gray area um, in terms of passing whenever I'm traveling. It's like I, I get the privilege of a door opening and them saying, oh, of course, sis, like we're related. <laughs> But I'm not from the Middle East, and I'm not from Asia, and I'm not from, I don't know, we could just keep listing continents. Greece, that's not a continent. But I feel like <laughs> it's just fascinating. So this girl, 26, Brooklyn, self-identifies as Dominican and Korean, since it's box-checked Asian slash some other race. This girl, 18, Texas. Self ID black and biracial census where a box checked black. And yet I feel like some of these people really look like people in my family and we don't have the same background. And it just keeps going. Chinese and Caucasian. Oh, interesting. He checks Native Hawaiian. Hmm. Uh. It also falls into like my own fantasy of imagining if my family, so my family is, uh, my siblings and I are of, uh, mostly share the same dad, and we all have different mothers. And so imagining what another child would have looked like if we had the same mom um, and who we would have looked like because I don't look like either of my parents. I, I look very much like both of them and neither of them. Um, this is older work. Ah. We haven't even gotten to gender. <laughs> How fascinating, gender. I don't know, but that can be Q&A. Um, but anyway, I feel like some of these were direct references that I pulled into, into the book. Like this one. Like using, this was the mock-up. It's very Devil Wears Prada. So to have pages that could switch around for pacing. Um, oh my God, text before it was like made beautiful. This ad completely changed. I wanted it to be some kind of like gender um, confrontation subtly. And so I was thinking about, you know, like chromosomes X, X, Y, and then I was like, that's lame. <laughs> we're not doing that. We're, we're gonna go to China. And, <laughs> cause I feel like it's just, it's, it's a better narrative. And um, we're, I mean, we're, we're all gonna be controlled anyway. So I might as well have an ad that like caters to the future audience. And the, and this is basically, I had my friend help me translate it, um, but with, within, oh fuck, I don't know, 
is it Mandarin? Like within these two, these two ways of speaking on drag, um, one is referencing what it means to be a cross-dresser, and the other is referencing what it means to be transgender, um, which can also be a Q&A question for anyone that finds that confusing. Um, and I won't judge you. <laughs> but it's obvious they're different. <laughs> but we can talk about it, because um, we're in a society that's about dialogue and I, I want to help you guys. I want to, I want to lead you guys. <laughs> um, these, these basically the same. The order was challenging. A lot was taken out of this series and this was actually the first, um, the first body of work within the magazine that kind of like breathed, oh, well, if this is an editorial, there's going to need to be other editorials. And stylistically, those editorials should feel very different. Like, they should feel like it's a different team of people, and they should feel like um, it's a different model, and they're in a different place. And because that's what, that's what a fashion magazine does. Like, it, it takes from everywhere. So the more aesthetics that I was able to kind of... Um, replicate or like mimic the better, um, which was kind of an exciting challenge to like, to rip out ads that I thought were successful or, or beautiful and really study font. Like f font is such a, um, it really like makes or breaks an image like this and you, what I kind of learned, this is like a, a hack if you want to make like a, a fashion moment or maybe you're like planning your, your wedding invitations and you want it to feel kind of, kind of chic. Just more space. Just more space between all the letters. The more space you have, like, it just looks so good. Or you cram them up really, really tight and then the font has to be like really skinny and... Um, that's another, with like within a page, like the same ad can do both at once and that's, that's pretty flattering too, at least from like the, what's used in 2019. Um, these, these were actually, yeah, the second sh shoot that I did, these were all in my apartment um, and the setup is just like this, which is why I was like, oh, I wanna do something like this for the, for the talk. But basically, I would be laying here, down here, <laughs> and then the camera is where the camera is, and then the I would have all of this on my on like a plate next to me, and I would have to just like position it over, and gravity would hold everything down until um, the snails were a challenge because they had their own agenda <laughs> and nothing to do with what I wanted. And they're actually really fast, which you wouldn't think, but like you're, as you are laying down, they, I put them on, I had to order them on eBay. I tried looking for them, because I'm from California, as you know, um, and they're everywhere. You just go to like a patch of ivy and they're, it's like, oh. But in the East Coast, it's very challenging to find snails. And so I had to buy them from this man that was like, they like to eat this kind of cabbage. And, they and I was like, oh, no, no, no. They're going to work for me. Like, they're, they're, <laughs> they have a job. And then I'm releasing them. So the putting them on, I was like, I saw it. Like, I saw, like, perfectly spread out, equidistant, and then the shells, maybe I have like two on, like one on each shell, like it's the, the middle of the eye. But no, all of the little snails went straight to the big snails and climbed on their backs. And then the big snails were so exhausted from carrying all the small snails, they just fall off. So the shoot, like you can see where there's like patches of like mud missing, it's because they like took the mud with them as they like rolled off the table. 
Um, it was a nightmare. I'm never working with them again, but. <laughs> <laughs> the fruit was like so easy um, and there's no Photoshop partly because I don't know how to use it but partly also because I just feel like it's like a world of possibility which is so exciting but it's like too big like it's like wh where do you stop and wh why would you if, if you can make this image in, with nothing um, so yeah, I guess there's like a part of me that likes rules or likes to work within a confine because you have to be more creative. So for example, if you look really closely, there's a toothpick right here connecting the two garlics. And if you look at anything that's pretty big, like the pineapple, there's a toothpick. And that's really the only tool. Oh, this is Dentafloss coiling together, and there's like a gorgeous grape necklace that I was obsessed with. Ah, oh, where is it? Did we already pass it? It was so heavy, and the grapes sliced right through it because the floss was so sharp, and so the necklace started like kind of like falling apart as, as I was like walking around, and I was like, oh, I have to shoot now. But I tried to remake it for like an event, and it was a failure. Ugh. Um, I don't know, this is me. This was a direct reference from this. Um, I was like, this is so perverted to me and like fascinating. She's like a little sex worker geisha. And this one at least feels like this was taken from like a childhood moment, but it's still an ad, which is really interesting. Um, and I spent most of my childhood in a wig or some version of a wig. Maybe it was like a mop or like a hula skirt or a scarf, um, but like hair. <laughs> um, it was like, I don't know, there was something like mesmerizing and like tactilely like calming to me about like touching it or being like inside of it. Um, and so I was like, I have to use one of those images. My mom took these. Okay, so she took one picture in the entire book, but I took all the rest of them. She took this picture. Um, hmm. She loves this magazine. I feel like this is also really interesting to have. This is a school photo, a yearbook photo of me with red hair from 2006. Is it still in focus? Is it? No. Yeah. Can you tell? I'm like, I'm like going to kill the photographer. Um, I have le like fall leaves in my hair. Um, I have like a string of sequins wrapped around the leaves. Um, and I didn't have makeup skills at that time, but I did have face paint on. That was like my like... This series is called Queer Rage. Um, and I feel like that word didn't exist. And if it did, it didn't mean what it means now. Um, and I feel like I probably wouldn't even have used that word if, I, if it was around. Um, but I, I still don't really think a word exists. And I think that's probably, oh my God. I'm just deciding how much to share with you. Mm. No. There was a quote. Maybe I'll read the quote. Oh my God, it's not here. Uh, basically, it's a quote about how, um, like a way to protect myself or a way um, to, to, be, to be loud was visual. visual. Um, I was never a violent child, but that never stopped me from hitting them with a look. 
Out in the real world, dressing loud was as much my weapon as it was my protection. So yeah, I feel like that's what I was hoping people would sit with or contemplate when looking at this like excess. This was also in, in, in like acting or dressing how I did as a teenager um, was just to show you that like I didn't know how to edit. I didn't know what the word editing was. These are my parents <laughs> or a representation of them. You can see where I got my body. Oh my God. And most of these were like gorilla. Like this was a hotel that I was not a guest in. Um, there was a very lovely couple that was swimming in the pool. And I will just tell you, all you have to say is, I'm a student. <laughs> I'm, I, it's an assignment. I don't really know. I just have to like take pictures. And they're like, oh, of, of course. Put your mask back on. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel safe. Um, but it was, it was pretty assaulting. I kind of assaulted them in, in like a, a kind way. Um, that was my bedroom in Brooklyn. This is my mom's pool, which is mostly empty. This is the same hotel on the same day. Yeah, with a whole different look. And this room has cameras in it. Oh my God, there's one. And, um, <laughs> oh my God, so I moved this water cooler because aesthetically it, there needed to be something here and I liked that it was blue, um, but I had these heels on so I'm like waddling, moving the cooler over and um, this man comes in and I'm like, oh, thank you. Can you please help me? And he's like, no, you have to leave. You can't be here. And I was like, but I am here. And I haven't taken the picture yet, and I just need, I just need like 300 pictures to choose from before I can leave. And he, I don't know, he was like, we've been w watching you from the like surveillance area. And, and I was like, you're a pervert. And he was like, I, and I was like, please help me, pervert. And he, I guess it like willed him into feeling guilty. And he did. Um, and then he, I made him leave so I could take the picture because I was like, I don't think I can get it with you watching, which is a part of this whole process. And we'll get to, especially with like the mannequins, um, who is like very much are like stand-ins for real people. I mean, they are real people. They just don't eat or talk or sleep. But the, I got it. I mean, I'm a, uh, I love this one. This is in the gallery here. Mm. Demi-celebrity, so this is an interview that I did with myself, um, but, <laughs> but I pretended to be someone else. So I, I'm trying to, to write in another voice. You can tell me if I do that successfully um, when you read it. But the, it's basically, I don't know, I'm hoping to address the way of speaking that is very much like my gallery voice, opposed to any kind of coded language or modern language or like what, however you want to talk it, how, how I speak to my friends casually. Um, like the word tea. And I actually went through this with my gallerist who's here. And um, we were reading the interview and every now and then he'd stop to be like, what, what's tea? Like, what's tea mean? And just, ex and we talked about having like a, what would you call it? Like a, a rubric or like some kind of like cheat sheet at the end that kind of addresses all these slang words. And I said no. <laughs> and it was the right call. So you'll have to Google it. Demons. This series, I did it um, while at a residency in Brooklyn. 
um, called ISCP, and they're amazing. And if anyone's an artist here and is going to move to New York, you have to be in one of the boroughs. You should apply if you're like a person of color and need financial need. Um, they're amazing. Um, so this was all this in my like little studio space that I had for several months um, and just colored paper. And I made all these hair crowns when I was at, like, it, like in this little room. Um, and that's all I did. And I f actually felt like I, like I wasn't productive enough. Um, like I hadn't made enough. And now looking back, like they're crazy and it's fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was very much like the construction of this for the picture. And then like while taking the picture, it kind of like would fall apart because um, it needs, they weren't, you know, well crafted. Like this is a balloon <laughs> In, inside, inside like a coating of hair. Um, everything else is like a wire armature that I would like braid into it. Um, and some braids I'm using like several times. So like things have to be taken apart um, to become something else. I was making a lot of the jewelry. Um, um, this is, I found this perfume bottle that looks just like Tikal, which is a temple in Guatemala and I'm obsessed. I don't need to keep it though. So if anyone, <laughs> JK, I want it. I am, then this is my, um, I am told this is the summary of my practice, which I'm borrowing from America's Next Top Model, which <laughs> makes a lot of sense um, for why pop culture is into me right now. Like, we all love America's Next Top Model. Um, they're all me. And they're all just kind of like cut up into being the same image to overlay into one world. Um, but this is me as the hairdresser. This is me as the makeup artist. This is me as the stylist fit, fitting. Uh, the, the photographer and, of course, the star. Um, and the title is me, myself, 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 and I. And then my, I plug my website. <laughs> um, I think it worked. <laughs> this is an ad for boots that are about like identifying, um, but it's kind of making f fun of how many queer symbols we have um, and why, like, why do we need them? And in, in what world does this summarize who a person is? Um, like, who invented these? Basically, I, f I found this huge, like, it was like a chapter on queer symbols. And someone, probably a man, <laughs> wrote this, like, it was just like, here's a circle with a line in there. Here's a circle with a line through it. Here's a circle with a, I don't know. Oh, oh, okay. And you're reading through, and, and the, even the terms for what they are, it's like, you're, I was like, I guess I'm a banana. I guess that's what I would be. So I'm the circle with the banana through it. The, and I decided just, I don't know. And again, no, no real Photoshop. Like you can see there's like sweaty tape. <laughs> Because I was like, oh, well, clear tape obviously will disappear. <laughs> Not when you're a sweating girl. This one, we all love the Guadalupe. So she made a lipstick. <laughs> She's actually inside the lipstick. Her tears. Um, then this series, Body and Thrall, this, and this is the last series that I made, so in terms of work that I've made, this is the most recent. Um, and honestly, I think this is probably aesthetically closest to my voice. Um, at least I would like to think so. Um, 
and it's a play on words, and I guess I could talk about it. But the title itself is a play on words. <laughs> A shifting between enthrall, which means being under someone else's power, morally or ment oh yeah, morally or mentally ensnared, and enthrall to capture the attention of another, to bewitch, ensnare, or fascinate. And that kind of that kind of loss of a boundary or kind of mis misleading uh, into a gray area is like probably like my place of power as a maker where I feel the most comfortable and I feel, I feel the most at home. And it's so hard to articulate that in an, in an image, um, especially in a world where everyone wants a summary of what it is they're looking at. They wanna to be told what they're looking at and why they should be looking at it. Um, and that's just not the way the, that's not the way the world works. Like you can look at garbage for hours, so what? This is, this is a mannequin. I have about um, eight mannequins, nine, and <laughs> They, only three live with me. We have to revolve because my space is quite small. Um, so, <laughs> so I like I have favorites, obviously, clear, clear favorites. Um, and the male mannequins are actually like the newest addition to the crew. And I had to source them because I was like, well, I guess I could have every narrative I need with just like another like femme body. <sighs> but to be fair and to be diverse, I said, no, let's have some big guys. Um, and it did, it changed the narratives. Like all the narratives like become about sex immediately, which is really interesting considering like the prior work that I've done with mannequins has always been female and in that it can it can be like maybe a little charged with eroticism but it's it's the space in which women can inhabit intimacy together is so different and it's um there's like a permission that doesn't exist it doesn't really exist among men either unless we're going to call them gay um, so at some points I like become a gay man and this isn't probably, I feel like there's, at least I pretend to be, there's another option of this image, this one that I feel like conveys it a little more strongly. And this one was in the Biennale, not this one. This is also here, this work. This is me as Donatella, and this is me as her trade. These are my parents again. <laughs> Yeah, and then it turns into color. This is also here. And then all the thank yous. And um, this, real, this was actually a real billboard that was up um, in the garment district. And then the other cover. I don't know. I don't know, I get, we could, if you, these are postcards my parents um, we're making for their, to raise money for their nonprofit um, when they were doing a lot of rebuilding in Guatemala after, oh, that's me and my dad. He looks exactly the same. <laughs> like he has not aged. It's, it's honestly very reassuring. Um, this is another high school photo. <laughs> 
Um, I have a monkey on my shoulder, like a rubber one, and a wipile on, which is like a traditional Mayan blouse. Oh, there's my dad again, sitting in a tire. Tikal again. Mm. But yeah, I feel like the last step backwards is the sketchbook, which is where everything came into place before, so I'll be quick. I feel like this is obviously that same made in Manhattan narrative, me serving. This is that Chinese ad. I don't know. It seems like the best place to put things down before they exist, so I don't repeat myself, or, or like I can actually build a narrative. Oh. Oh man, there's covert girl, and covert girl is a play on words, which I'll. I'll just let you in on one thing, I guess. So if you break up the world, we all know cover girl, but with the T in it, it's cover T girl. And T girl in the community is trans girl. So it's both cover girl, covert girl as in hiding your T and being a T girl. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I think this is, these are actually a lot of the ads. This is me practicing my signature. <laughs> um, some hair. You can't see those. What else? There's some sketches of the masking series that people liked earlier today, so I will show those, and then we'll do Q&A. Oh my god. Oh. This isn't it. But I did want to share this. Hold on. That has nothing to do with the other thing. I think it must be this one. No. This one? Oh yeah. See? Remember? Okay. This one. So this was my, um, I was talking to someone, going back to words and how I don't like them and how nothing, nothing works. <laughs> um, I decided, okay, if this is an illustration of opposite, um, I am a child, I'm a, I am a biracial person. And so I was trying to articulate that with these little slug, slug ghosts. And I decided, Maybe they're more like worms. Anyway, I was integration. This is how I would have articulated integration. This one's gay. This one's lesbian. They're very similar. <laughs> but they're different. But they're very similar. This one's bi. This one's straight, because it's boring. <laughs> I'm sorry. This one's gold, um, which means like open. It's like a non-monogamous thing. Um, see, like they're both like pretty independent of each other, but they're like, they're touching. They're like, you're here, but I'm doing my thing. But I love you. But like, I don't, I don't, I'm looking over there. Um, I have my own stuff. And then this one is intermit intermittent. Um, this is, this is the baby, I guess, and this is interim, <laughs> which means to go through. Anyway, I thought that was really helpful. I should bring this on dates. <laughs> I'll be like, how do you identify? <laughs> and then they'll make their choice and I'll be like, thank you. <laughs> I'll have the pasta, oh, okay. Ta-da! Thank you. <laughs> 
Yes. I so enjoyed your presentation and your art. And I was curious about, you know, you were mentioning with your photography that you do 300 shots and, and stuff. And can you talk about that? Pro is it on a timer? Are you controlling it? Yeah. So I have usually a tripod, usually a camera, and everything has kind of been fully premeditated the night before. Um, and I've basically dedicated the entire day to this image, to like making this image, which is another reason why in that hotel, it was like a big deal for me that I took like two very different girls in one day, just because I'm slow. And that's what happens when you like want to do everything and want to be in control in that way, you, you lose time. Um, and I have it set on a timer, and I have a very tiny remote. It's like about this big. Um, and it has been everywhere. Yeah. It's, it's literally, it's, it's, it's been like ev a lot of places in the world, but it's also been like everywhere in proximity to my body. <laughs> like I've hidden it in many different places for the shot. Um, so like if it has to disappear, it has to disappear, and if that if that means it's going in my mouth, so be it, you know, or anywhere else. I feel like there's um because it is so small, but usually it's in my hand, and you'll see if you study the pictures in the gallery, you'll see there's always kind of like one hand that's like not in the picture, like there's always kind of like a or like it's pressed against something, or it's like pressed against something, you know what I mean? Like just for to hold it because. It only takes one picture, and it only gives me 10 seconds to fall into it, um, and then I have to do it again. So I look like a crazy person when a, in a public place because it's literally like, it's literally like. You know what I mean? And, there's, and, and that, as a, as a moment, helps me like get um, a shot where, like, Aesthetically, I look a certain way, but the, I think probably like my favorite shots, which was why Body and Thrall is one of my favorite series, is because I had finally gotten into a groove where I could hit the timer and my own kind of premeditation to want to look a certain way, I was able to like switch off. So it wasn't, it wasn't about like performing someone, it was like finally a glimpse into like me. Right, not not this like version of me that I was like much more comfortable sharing. Something something that was like a little more self conscious, and it, that's hard when you know when the picture is going to happen. You know, it's very different than working with someone and they're like, they can take it at any time. So, and now I can finally do that, which is a big part of also why this project happened. I like I didn't have. I didn't have the confidence to be able to like give someone else permission to, to take my image and know that they would see me the way I see myself. Um, and I was also in a very like different point in my transition at that time too. Like this was three years ago. And um, do you think you'll continue with this format, or do you see this format as one that will that will evolve past the magazine? I never want to make a magazine again. <laughs> I'm done. Um, this <laughs> this is a relic. <laughs> um, it's so much work. It's crazy. It's crazy. I didn't understand like. I think there was a whole, it's probably four years, not actually three, it was like three working, and then the fourth year was like culminating, partly this, but like looking for a printer, all of the tiny logistics of like, how, like how is text gonna fit on the page, the numbering, like all that stuff is so uninterested, I'm, I'm uninterested. Um, I think I'm more interested like this was, this was me being a supermodel. I think that was more so the narrative and now I'm done. Like now I know I am one. So <laughs> <laughs> the, next, the next chapter is something else. 
it's, um, it's another career move. Um, and it's another practice in which to get through an insecurity or find confidence or like evolve, you know what I mean? And then hopefully evolve in a way where like one day I don't even have to use me because I'll feel so cunt that I won't have to question it anymore. And I can question someone else who looks just like me. <laughs> yeah. I've been uh, watching some of your videos. Uh? And, uh, I just have one little technical question. You don't, you don't have a separate cinematographer. You're doing that too. I don't know. <clears throat> what videos have you been watching? <laughs> well, the one I have a particular question about was head to toe. Oh. oh, yeah, I didn't film that. Okay, and, and uh, th there's a part of head to toe uh, where it's kind of shot in an industrial thing, well, like a plant in the background. And there are a number of other characters that appear there and in other points. And I know, you know, in my mind, who I think those, those people mean, what those people mean, and what they're feeling as they react to you. But I, I had this nagging question, who are they really? Well, I'm... I would like to know who you think they are first. <laughs> There's a kind of a middle-aged man that I thought looks like your father. And there's a, a, a woman who looks more like Tina. Um, a little oh, bit yeah. that I said, well, that looks like it could be your mother. Then there's a young, a young adolescent, maybe a little more than adolescent, than I thought, brother. And then a fellow who's uh, Asian, who's observing and seems to be making, seems to be trouble. And uh, I, didn't, I, I didn't really know who he was. Uh, you didn't think we were related? <laughs> I, you know, I, I know what I felt. I know what I felt, that this was a family reacting to you. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know if those were actually the characters playing themselves <coughs> or they were actors. So that was, that is a music video. Head to Toe, which I, I, I made, I collaborated with three people from my college after we graduated. Um, they were starting like a production company and we had always been friends and they wanted to work with me and I wanted to work with them. And all of the actors, those were the only people I really knew and all the actors that were in the project showed up day of from Craigslist. <laughs> Um, they weren't paid. I'm so sorry. Um, we didn't have the budget. It was, it was literally like, you're going to do this. Um, and one of the people didn't show up. And so my friend went on Grindr and we got this guy <laughs> and he showed up. Um, that was the guy in like the twisted, the twist, like the little blue puffer jacket on the bike. Do you remember him? He... I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I hit my arms around him and we're like on the bike and we're like, supposed to be like in love, but like I had never met this person. <laughs> anyway, um, he went to Brown um, because we're still in Rhode Island. Um, and as an experience, uh, we, were, we weren't family. Oh, oh, I don't know. Is this? Oh. You're good. Yeah. Um, but my dad is in one of my music videos, but it's not that one. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you probably are just sensing what usually happens, which is I usually work with people I know. Um, it's like trust issues. <laughs> it's really hard. It's really hard for for me to be intimate with with strangers or vulnerable in in a way with my body with someone else, um, which is partly why mannequins happen, because it's a safe space. And, you know, like, 
I, I feel like at that time, like I couldn't have been, I couldn't have been nude on this guy that we just met from Grindr. Even if I knew they had, we weren't gonna do anything for like the sake of the shot, it still would be like too anxiety provoked. Um, yeah. I, maybe I'll tell you what the next chapter is. Actress. That's the next one. But you can't tell anyone. <laughs> and you can't post this video. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, any more questions? But is, is that book or is that magazine published? Yeah. Indigenous Woman? Yeah. Oh, it's great. Thank you. Yeah. It's here. It's here in the gift shop, too. Wow. Yeah. I don't know how many. Yeah. <laughs> Probably not that many. Um, I noticed there wasn't any images of your mom. You mentioned your father a lot. Is there, like, a, a just... Why? <laughs> um, so my mom would probably be here tonight if she could have, which I think is partly why. I, like, it grants her a certain amount of anonymity. Um, but yet she's, she's private. She's a sweet woman. And, and even when I bring her up in interviews, she's like, she has like trouble with how I've spoken about her. So I just, I'm like, oh, I guess you don't. I won't talk about you at all, because we're very close. <laughs> um, but yeah, she's like, she's American. Um, she is my biggest cheerleader. Um, and in many ways, um, like a, a, a pioneer in terms of the, like the way she's kind of broken outside of the way she was raised and how, how she thinks. And she's like very liberal um, and really smart and like puts herself on the board of anything that she's a part of. Um, so like growing up, um, there was a gender neutral bathroom put into like my middle school and I never, I would use it cause like why not? It was huge. It was like, it had like, uh, no one else went in there and there was like a wheelchair on it and I was like, oh, this is for a handicap, whatever. But it was actually just a gender neutral bathroom and I would bring all my girlfriends in there and we'd all pee together. Um, <laughs> we'd pee together and talk about boys and girls, but like the, I didn't realize that she put herself on the board of my school to put in that bathroom. Um, and the school recognized that I needed it too. Um, and yeah, I don't know. There's like so many examples of that, even, even ones that I probably am not privy to. Um, like dance classes and all that stuff, like dress codes. Any place where there's like regimented structure in, in, ha in how a child displays, I don't know who they are. Um, and you don't realize it until you like have a child that doesn't want to participate in any of those rules, and the um, which was me, and to and to have that kind of um, it, it made it made for a very like controversial childhood. I, I could see you writing your own TV show or something. So, are you going to write as well as that? I mean, you seem to do it. Yes. I can't tell you. <laughs> um, I'm doing all the emojis. Can you tell? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yep. Let's do, let's do um, a personal question. Whatever you think that is. <laughs> I'll do it. Okay. I'm curious, how you chose to present yourself tonight, your, your choice of clothing? 
What clothing? <laughs> <laughs> it's very, I feel like more hair. And if I had like just a sarong, it's very Blue Lagoon, right? It's maybe just like more messy. Like more like she just shipwrecked. Actually, she had the top of her hair. It was more like this. It's more like that. Let's bring up an image. No, <laughs> it's very that. She's like a strong reference. Um, I don't know. I thought it was gonna be warm in Texas. <laughs> I was wrong. So I'm in something that I'm like a little cold in. Um, I feel like it was kind of expected of me to wear something tra like traditional or like from this world. Um, so I said no. <laughs> nude. <laughs> Just nude. This is, I don't know if this will get personal or not, but I keep thinking watching, first of all, I can't believe it only took four years to do that magazine. Right. Only? Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is such an undertaking. Just each of the, what I see as kind of sculptures that you created alone, just, and decisions, every decision about that blows me away. Yeah. It just, I, I mean, I, I don't want to lose sight of that because I am interested in the psychology of it too. I mean, that is, it's a great draw, I can't help it, but I don't want to lose sight of just how, what an undertaking yeah. that was. But I, I did, as I was watching, think I wonder if there were any revelations about yourself and about your interest in sort of projecting yourself into these characters you saw into magazines and such in the process now where you are as you deconstructed a magazine, did you have any revelations about the role that that had played in your life and kind of who you were and who you became? And yeah, um, I completely materialized who I am right now. Yeah. It's wild. I, w I wasn't, I, I mean, obviously, I don't look like that, but I look nothing like any of these people. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, I think, partly why, like, even if you look at makeup, there's, like, it's, like, it's heavier in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And by the end, there's none. I'm just, like, wet or, like, or like oiled up mm -hmm. or this kind of, I'm, I'm, like, I'm interested in and I'm finally able to feel like what is raw within this glossy world. Like how, cause there's like a, there's like a tipping point where you go too raw and all of a sudden it's a documentary, right? Um, I feel like, I feel like at least aesthetically, like fashion has kind of preliminary before it starts to read as something else. Um, and I think a lot of, a lo I was looking for a lot of validation in making this. And it was partly from the industry and also f for myself and, and the, within the standards of beauty and representation and wanting so badly for this icon to exist. And it didn't need to be me, but no one else was gonna put me on the cover of a magazine. And no one else had I, I mean, we had Caitlyn Jenner. We literally had Caitlyn Jenner as like the spokesperson for what like the trans narrative is, because my mo my mother, as smart as she is, she was like, "Look, sweetie," and I was like, "No," <laughs> like, "Oh no," like she does not speak for me at all, mom. There's the no way, and the, the I don't know. I feel like that that was one of the that was the one of the things that I was like, "Wow, I have to do this," but the. Um, the funniest part is so much of this, it's like the size, the hand scripture is based on Interview magazine. Um, the 70s one, the old, the good stuff. Um, and like that kind of like, I was so into like the hand painted image. Um, it looked almost like, like a colored pencil. And like, I don't still know how they do it. And I'm a printmaker, that's 
what I was at RISD for. Um, and I know probably silk screen, if I was to go back into a facility, I could make something very reminiscent within silk screening. Um, but I was like, no, let's be stuck in this world where you can't do that. Because um, if that's the case, oh my god, I can make some like really beautiful, like sparse ads with silk screen. Oh. But no, we're in like digital world. Um, and like how can digital world pass? Um, as this, or like how close can we get? We're playing with like saturation, um, or like cutting things up and scanning things in. Um, and so this happened. And then, after this kind of like critique of this world that I felt like I was outside of, I was beckoned in, and I shot an editorial for Interview Magazine. And um, I should have brought it. I should have brought my copy of Interview. Um, I did a whole editorial with friends, and I was approached and asked, oh, can you do, can you do Indigenous Woman for us? And I was like, no, that's my art. Like, that's, also that's so uninteresting to me. You have all the clothes. Like, you have everything that I, that I wanted. Um, so like, give me, give me what's on the runway right now. Like, I want full Marc Jacobs looks. I want full Balenciaga. I want full. And they were like, oh yeah. Um, and nothing fit anyone because all those women are this big. And um, but it was so fab. And to ha and I like was able to hire friends who did hair and like hire friends to be like ass like assistants or like hire friends to be models, and I was able to like pay everyone, and it felt so good to like, to see everyone really living like this like glamorous fantasy that isn't real, and in no, and in no way sh should validate anyone. Um, but I was able to like experience that or kind of like give it out. Hand, like, like, it's like I had a, I was able to like open the door, like I was beckoned to the door, and then I could like, I could be like, come on, come on, you guys, get in here. Um, but then once we were in there, I was like, oh my god, let's get out, like, <laughs> like get out quick, because it's so gross, and it's like any other industry, which is about commerce, and it's not like, I don't know. So I, I think that's another reason why like, I have no interest in another magazine and I have no interest in like, being the supermodel anymore. Because um, I realize it's like I'll never have the kind of autonomy and control and vision to do this anywhere but here. Um, and that's what I was after. I was, I was after being able to to be put forward and glorified without being represented as like a marginalized person, which is the only way it works, even with press. And it's probably gonna happen with press for this show too, where like all my qualifiers, like trans, Latinx, biracial, Aries. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but they come before my name, feminist. I'm not even, <laughs> kind of. Um, I'm gold. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's just, it just sucks. It just sucks. But this is really cool. <laughs> yeah. May I ask you something personal? Yes. Okay. Because there hasn't been any talk about you being a trans artist. What? And, well, if, if it was, I missed that. Uh, how old were you when you knew that you were, you know, the wrong sex? Or, you know, mm. I mean, I, you know, or, or how young were you? Mm. Because I think this has been your identity for a long time, looking at the pictures when you were young. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering how were you mother and father impacted by that? Mm. Whoa, oh my God. No, <laughs> I mean, yes, um, wow. It's just interesting. 
I mean, like, I could, like, not be here tomorrow, so, like, why not answer this question, you know? Um, I don't, I, like, sometimes I'm, like, well, trans, transness is an ideology, <laughs> like any label. Um, it's, it's not real. <laughs> um, male isn't real, female isn't real. None of it's real. We like, the reality is one in which we put our energy into. And it's like, it's how other people treat us as well. Um, and so I guess in some ways, I like always knew and never knew you know, like there's not, um, I, I, I knew that there were things that I wasn't allowed to do, toys I was not allowed to play with, clothes I was not allowed to wear, and it just made me sneakier. It just, it just, it, it made me, covert girl. it made me covert girl, yeah, <laughs> it made me a spy. And like there's not, um, I'm, I'm like kind of blessed. I'm like kind of like, wow, like thank God that happened. Like cis girl me um, would be so boring. <laughs> She'd be gorgeous. <laughs> She'd be gorgeous and so boring because everyone would treat her so nice her entire life because she's gorgeous. You know what I mean? She would be like, it'd just be easy. And like it's not, or easier. It's not easy for any of us. So it would just be easier. Um, and that awareness used to kind of like depress me. Um, but then I was like, no, this like, this is your weapon. This, like weaponize this, like make, make, make this, this, the head of the spear that propels you forward so you can, so you can figure out all the other things that matter more, you know? that matter more than this question of who am I? And yet like it's the one question we all come back to. It's like fundamentally human. Who am I? And, it, it, and it, it's like that's a part of gender and that's a part of sexuality and that's a part of religion and spirituality because um, all of those elements position you to feeling fulfill, fulfilled and seen. Um, But it was definitely hard for my dad because he's very machismo. And um, <laughs> in some ways, I guess you could, I'd be like a tomboy. Um, like I was always at the job site. He worked in construction. I was like on the catamaran. I was like climbing through rebar, falling through bridges, like badly made. Little like over creeks, like nothing too scary. Um, but like, that has nothing to do with like your gender. And it's so funny how like, we kind of position things as being masculine versus feminine. Um, and I think, the, I think those are far more interesting um, in terms of like, I feel like people, people that have a, even people that have like a skill like a like people that sew versus people that like do like timber frame. I feel like we gender those so strongly. Like a man sewing is like what? But like to me I'm like that's so hot. <laughs> and a woman building a house like that's so hot. Anyway. I didn't answer your question on purpose. <laughs> I like what you did say. That's so that's okay. Oh, you had a question. Uh, yeah, I wanted to commend you on the work. I'm really impressed. I, uh, I know you talk a lot about validation and representation. And it speaks volumes for you to take on all these roles as photographer, stylist. Uh, but I, I was more curious, as an artist, I, I, uh, like for me, when I first saw the work, I know I saw you have a, this word that says uh, transphobia is ancient. And based on the pictures, I thought you were doing a play on like, the Musha culture in mm -hmm. southern Mexico. Um, and so I was just curious if there was other interpretations or misinterpretations of your work. Because uh, I know as an artist, you know, you just put, put it out there and then it just, you know, people take it as they will. Mm -hmm. So I was curious if you were excited about any interpretations or misinterpretations that you got out of it. Mm. 
Mm. Oh, like excited about a specific one? Or excited for it to just go wrong? <laughs> oh my God, oh. Oh my God. There's, <laughs> there's so many misinterpretations. Um, ooh. I mean, in general, I, I'd, ra I'd, rather, I'd rather not sit up here and tell you anything. <laughs> I'd rather sit up here and like, I don't know, go through Instagram or something and be like, this always comes up as an ad. Isn't that crazy how I'm like targeted or whatever? I feel like algorithms. Um, my, hope, my hope is that there is not enough substantially for people to even understand the truth, whatever the truth is, of who I am as a maker. I, I feel like it, it, in 2019, 2020, soon to be, I feel like all it does is kind of segregate me and my practice to be political. Um, and so like the less they know, the better. Like, it's, that's just, it's the more forums I get to exist in or the work gets to exist in. And it, and it gets to touch more people and people who would be um, eager to be bigots, you know? I'm trying to think of one story. I can't. <laughs> I mean, the one we just had, where everyone in the project was my family member. <laughs> um, or like my dad acting in a project and everyone thinking he was like my pimp, even though that's kind of what I casted him as. Um, yeah, oh, there's just so many. Oh my God, last question. Well, you mentioned how you, you don't care to be political, but you know, when you are on the pages of Interview Magazine or the cover, I mean, or historical situations, you know, where a trans person is on a cover of a magazine where the doors have been opened, don't you think that's political? I mean, just your image on the cover or in the magazine is political. Right, right. So like, goals is not adding to that, not giving them ammo, not giving them quotes, not giving them actions that say like, I'm a social justice warrior, you know? Because all that does is position, all that does is position people to, own, to, to be references for a cause only. And then they're stuck as, as being like the person to, to say, are we allowed to say that? How do you say this? It's, it's kind of like not knowing how to spell and refusing to learn how and always kind of going to the source to be like, C-A-T, cat. <laughs> C-A-T? And you're like, yes, C A T, like not K A T, and you're like, oh, no, it's not. And I'm still here teaching you how to like spell like this very like small word that like doesn't really matter. Um, I'm dyslexic, so I actually <laughs> spelled cat with a K for many years. <laughs> the letter C doesn't need to exist, in my opinion. <laughs> There's no use for it. We have S and we have K. And like C does both their jobs. So it's just quite confusing. <laughs> anyway, thank you.